Hello everyone, my name is Melissa Javeri and thank you for receiving my colleagues and I today. We are here because we see so much potential in the Oliver and Bonaccini Empire. Yes, Empire. The realm you have created since 1993 is an absolute gold mine. And you know that. You have built on your success over and over again. With 12 standalone operating, operating restaurants and 8 events venue, your dynasty keeps on growing. Your target audience, being the male and female middle class yuppie with a disposable income, just cannot get enough of your upscale fine dining experience. You've captivated the attention of some of the most renowned food bloggers in Toronto, Twitter critiques, and many of the local magazine food experts. You are the acclamation of royal dining in Toronto and beyond. And as you know, you have an absolute loyal string of brand advocates supporting and promoting your restaurants, catering services, and events venue. So how do we make improvements on our masterpiece? Where is your company headed organically? My colleague, John Doucette, will share some of our findings. John? So the first platform we audited was the OMV's Twitter account and compared it to the, their two competitors, the McEwen Group and the Liberty Entertainment Group. OMV does have the most amount of followers at 15,000, although they do follow the least amount of people. Um, it's only a few hundred, whereas make their competitors follow several thousand, which also gives you more followers because you hope that they do follow you back. As far as their tweets, re retweets, and replies, um, it's about fairly even. About 36% of all their posts are tweets, and 33% is re uh, retweets, and 28.5% are replies. So it's pretty balanced in that aspect. They mostly retweet customer food pics, and they post original content um, in terms of tweeting dishes and what the chefs are working on. The peak times for posting seem to be Sunday, between Sunday and Tuesday. They also get the most comments between Sunday and Tuesday. As for Instagram, again, ONB does have the most amount of followers. They just barely beat McEwen Group. Um, and they do have the second most amount of total posts. But again, the OMB is following the least amount of followers, which could uh, turn into more followers um, just by following back. Um, they do get two comments per photo and three and 3.2 comments for video. Backstage uh, pictures of the kitchen life is mostly what they post as well as uh, some new food and catering events and they do also post employee events uh, to show off their corporate culture. As for Facebook, um, OMB does have the least amount of fans only at 1,200 or so, where the competitors have 3,600 each. So they are falling behind in the terms of uh, Facebook. Uh, most of the things that OMB does post is restaurant announcements and blog posts, um, and announcements from their blog posts. Um, they do have a very high level of engagement though when they do post. It's not too often when they post, but they do get a lot of engagement. They get a lot of comments and likes when they do tend to post. And best times for them to post is between Monday and Wednesday. As for LinkedIn, OMB is pretty much dominating in LinkedIn with 3,600 followers, whereas McEwen Group only has 55, and Liberty Group trails behind that with behind OMB with 1,600. So they do have the most amount of followers on LinkedIn, and mostly they post uh, announcements of new restaurant openings as well as articles from the OMB blog website. Um, it's almost all self-promotion though. There is no real interaction. It's all one-way posts. I did notice that. As far as interest, OMB is lagging behind on Pinterest as well with only 400 followers whereas McEwen Group has 1500 and Liberty Group is right around with OMB with 450 followers. Again, they are following the least amount of people. Um, there seems to be a trend. They don't seem to follow 
um, a lot. They just accept followers, which you know, that's, they get a lot more followers if they follow other people and hope they follow back. Um, they, what they mostly post on OMB's Pinterest is uh, the pictures of the restaurants they own and food, as well as um, some of their upscale events and weddings. Peak times for them to post seem to be between Tuesday, Friday, and Wednesday. It's also uh, the most time when new content um, is posted. As for YouTube, all three companies have absolutely no presence on on uh, YouTube. They have all have a, under 100 subscribers each, but ironically, they do have 20, you know, all have over 20,000 views in total. So they aren't posting very much and they don't have a lot of subscribers because there's not a lot of content there, but they are getting a lot of views when they do post. So that's a, definitely an area we're going to recommend. So let's take a closer look at Facebook. As you can see, uh, the McEwen group has a, a good amount of engagement, but uh, Oliver and Bonaccini restaurants has the highest amount of engagement on Facebook. They also have the highest amount of post interaction with 0.8% uh, uh, in post interaction, as well as um, the Liberty Group posts the amount the most amount per day with three posts per day and Oliver and Bonaccini again the least amount of posting on Facebook but they do have a lot of engagement when they do post um, so that's an, another area we we targeted here's some some uh, of the top posts with the ones that received the most likes and shares as you can see Oliver and Bonaccini on Facebook got the, the highest uh, post I got 77 likes and 51 shares and four comments so that was you know out of all of them that was the best one now when we look, take a look, closer look at Twitter uh, the Oliver Mancini posts 1.3 times per day um, slightly uh, slightly better than their competition and they have um, a, the second most amount of total likes and but they do have the most amount of retweets so they are active on their re retweets and their, and their tweets. Um, the weekly growth is at uh, 0.23%. It's it's behind the McEwen group, but overall it's pretty close to the average value. And here are some of the top posts and tweets from Oliver and Bonaccini. Uh, you can see that a lot of the, the stuff, the contest things that they do, um, get a lot of favorites and retweets. And uh, the most popular post of all the competition was one by Liberty Group, and it was um, promoting the, a 5K run they did, and they got 247 favorites and 66 retweets. So these are the type of posts that get a lot of interaction on uh, for these types of restaurants. And so moving on to Instagram, you can see Oliver Bonchini has the second most amount of followers. Uh, they do not post a lot. They only have 24 posts, but then they have 62 comments per post. So their their ratio of comments per post is, is higher than their competition. And again, they are not following a lot of people. They only have 357. So moving on. And now here are some of the top posts. So again, we have the Mikuan group posting a picture of one of their dishes and it got 212 likes and six comments. The interaction was 3.6%. And uh, you can see like on Instagram, that's a lot of the food posts are the most popular ones. So that's good. Something that we recommended in our recommendations. It's good to know that these are the type of things that they prefer on Instagram. So a summary of the competitive landscape, what OMB does well, OMB does dominate its main competitors on Twitter and LinkedIn. They do a good job of promoting new dishes and the individual restaurants they own uh, via Twitter. And uh, OMB is on par with its competitors on Instagram. Those are the things that they are doing well, but there are some things that they're not doing well. And these areas that improve our OMB doesn't have a lot of synergy between platforms, leaving the platforms isolated. They're very siloed. Secondly, OMB social media posts are all self-serving. They're one-way content that is not tied together in any form of, of theme or series. OMB doesn't have any community management on the platforms, no substantial interactions in the comments. They mostly just post and forget about it. And this is the same on nearly all platforms. 
OMB is missing opportunities for sharing more customer experiences and food, as well as sharing recipes and providing contests to further engage their audience. OMB is also falling way short on Facebook and Pinterest, and they're almost non-existent on YouTube and Google+. So now I'm going to be passing this on to Janelle and Megan, and they're going to be going over our recommended action plan with our specific goals, objectives, strategies, and tactics for what we recommend OMB to do to take their social media platforms and their social media strategy to the next level. Hi, my name is Janelle, and now we'll get into the recommended action plan. First, our goal which is to position OMB as the social media leader in upscale events and fine dining franchising in Toronto and the GTA. What are some of our objectives? Well, the outcome that we would like to see with the benchmark of July 31st, 2016, is the increase of the number of blog viewership by 40%, the increase of OMB restaurant gross sales by a total of 15%, and the increase of the total amount of event parties held within the Toronto and GTA area. We would also like to reach 40% increase in Facebook likes by July 31st as well, uh, achieve 40% increase in Instagram followers, hit 1,000 YouTube subscribers and 100,000 total views, increase the number of Twitter followers, increase Instagram followers by 40%, and increase Instagram comments by 40% as well. Our strategy with social media for Twitter, it will be used as OMB's social media customer service platform, providing Q&A and problem solving. Twitter will also be the place where customers will receive the most two-way interaction and value with OMB. On Facebook, this platform will be used to track customer data and promote restaurants to targeted Facebook users. OMB will use platform to promote contests and promotions to increase customer traffic online and with our blog, utilize platform as the go-to place for recipes, local food events, and tips and tricks for DIY gourmet cooking. This platform will also be used to capture customer feedback by posing questions in blog posts. With Instagram, OMB will use Instagram to post weekly recipes, hashtag food of the day pictures, and gifts of DIY gourmet cooking at home. Instagram will also be used to promote contests and promotions that OMB is running for each restaurant. With YouTube, we will use YouTube primarily to post videos on DIY gourmet cooking at home, table decor ideas, and video series that showcase each restaurant. All videos uploaded to this platform will be linked via the blog, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And now I will pass it over to Megan, who will give you more uh, details about our action plan. Go ahead, Megan. We are recommending the following tactics for Oliver and Bonaccini to achieve. We recommend the following tactics for Instagram. Oliver and Bonaccini should comment on all customer food pictures and tags. They should utilize hashtags when sharing pictures and posts to stay current and increase their trends. They should follow all followers back. They should run a comment to win contest for 10% off meal and two for one coupons as an incentive for customers. They should also compare their lowest comments and lowest posts per day to their competitors to make sure that they are staying current. Oliver and Bonaccini should post a hashtag food of the day to increase hashtags and as well use hashtags in all their in all posts to track their effectiveness. For their blog, we recommend that they post more holiday and themed recipes for customers, that they utilize this platform for customer learning by posting tips and tricks by the head chef, 
They should use tags and categories when uploading a blog post that helps customers search or find other articles that have been archived. They should also showcase local food events in detail on the blog that they have shared on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for increased traffic. They should begin using hashtags in all their blog posts to track the effectiveness and use social tools such as Siosomos Heartbeat to listen socially. The final platform that we have recommended tactics for is YouTube. Oliver and Bonaccini should sh run contests such as share and like for a chance to win to increase customer traffic and incentivize customers. They should run a video series showcasing all restaurants where they post one video per week in a 12 series video. They should also run a video series doing tips and tricks with the head chef on how to cook gourmet food at home. And they should use their YouTube channel to promote videos to subscribers. Just as they were doing on Facebook and Twitter, they should comment on all user comments. And they should create videos on themed table settings and home decor ideas for special events and holiday seasons. The final tactic that we have recommended is to create a video series with the local wineries and craft breweries for best pairing meal ideas at home. With the tactics that we have laid out in previous slides, we are recommending the following tools for research and monitoring. Fan Page Karma, Siosomos Harpy, and Rival IQ. Additionally, we recommend Hootsuite for content and platform management as you can post to all social media platforms in one easy click. This reduces the amount of work that has to go into posts and increases the efficiency for, the, for Oliver and Bonaccini. Thank you for watching our presentation. We hope that this has been helpful and will help guide Oliver and Bonaccini to achieve the goals that they have set out for their social media plan.